Hello students, this is Dr. A. S. Ayyad. I welcome you all for the course on Find Element Method in Civil Engineering. In this class, we will see the introduction to three-dimensional finite elements. So far, whatever we have discussed in the 15-16 lectures, we have discussed about 1D and 2D elements only. Now in this class, we will just see what are the three-dimensional elements, what are the different applications of 3D elements in the analysis. Okay. A three-dimensional elements can be considered in the problem where field variables are dependent of x, y, z. Field variable means unknown variables. If you remember our the first class, we had discussed different types of field variables for the different types of problems. For example, for the solid mechanics problem, field variables are joint displacement, translation and rotations. When you are applying FEM to fluid mechanics problem, field variable will be in terms of velocity of fluid. Similarly, field variables will be temperature when you are solving problem of heat transfer. Right. So, when those field variables are dependent of all three coordinates or all three directions x, y, z, in such problems, three dimensional elements are used to discretize the structure. Right. That is the first point. For example, 3D solid structure. Okay. If you look at this 3D solid structure, which is nothing but, but a cantilever beam. Right. It is a cantilever beam with the fixed support at the left end. And it is subjected to the forces in all three directions. Right. So such three-dimensional solid problems subjected to three-dimensional loading can be discretized using three-dimensional elements. Right. 3D, 3D elements can actually be used to model all kinds of structural components. Okay, you can use 3D three-dimensional elements in the all problems, especially the problems of trusses, beams, plates, shells, and there are many other problems where you can use 3D elements. Typically, 3D solid elements can be tetrahedron or hexahedron in shape with either flat edges, surfaces, or third surfaces. So these are the two most widely used three-dimensional elements and that is tetrahedron and hexahedron. Okay. The surfaces of these elements may be flat or curved depending on for which structure you are using this element to discretize. If that structure is having flat surfaces, the surfaces of these elements will be also flat. If you are using this element to discretize the curved structure, then the surfaces of these elements will be curved in nature. Right? What are the applications of 3D element? Just we have discussed. It can be used for the three-dimensional analysis of any problem. Even especially these elements are used for the analysis of axisymmetric solids. Right. These are the applications of 3D elements. Right. Now, which are the 3D, ele 3D elements? There are two basic families of three-dimensional elements. Basic two families. Right. And these two families of three-dimensional elements are similar to two-dimensional or it, those are extended from the two-dimensional only. Right. For example, First family of three-dimensional element is the extension of triangular elements. But only triangular element, it is having only one plane like this. If you draw a triangle with the three edges, this is one surface only. Like this, you can form three surfaces if you join like this. There will be four nodes and four surfaces. right? So, first family of three-dimensional element is an extension of triangular elements and which are called as now tetrahedron. Okay, tetrahedron. 
similarly the second family is a extension of rectangular elements right second family is a rectangular element which is called as parallelopipeds or it is in a simple language it is called as hexadron right parallelopipeds are generated on the extension of rectangular elements so these are the two basic families of three dimensional elements right tetrahedron and parallelopipeds following are the few commonly used three dimensional solid elements so first is a tetrahedron if you look at the two figures both are tetrahedron first one is having four nodes three at the bottom corners and one at the top apex and in the second figure it is same tetrahedron only number of nodes are more four plus six total ten nodes so tetrahedron it is a four noded and this is 10 node tetrahedron right similarly the second family is parallelopiped so it is like this right it is a eight noded hexahedron or brick element you can say and here only the same shape but only number of nodes are more if you look at here eight nodes on this surface eight nodes on this surface so it is 16 and four nodes at the middle so it is a 20 noded parallelopiped right so these are the co most commonly used 3d solid elements for the finite element analysis if you want to explain this more in detail you can pick up one element from each family for example if you select tetrahedron from this four noded tetrahedron right like this so in three dimensional element each node to 3 degrees of freedom that is displacement in x direction y direction and z direction so u v and w are the displacement in x y and z directions respectively so at node number 1 3 degrees of freedom will be u1 v1 w1 then u2 v2 w2 similarly up to node number 4 it is u4 v4 w4 so total number of nodes in tetrahedron are 4 total degrees of freedom will be 4 into 3 12 okay so 3 degrees of freedom per node total df are 12 out of which 4 degrees of freedom are in x direction that is u1 to u4 4 degrees of freedom are in y direction that is v1 to v4 and 4 degrees of freedom in z direction that is w1 to w4 right now if you want you can write down the displacement function or displacement polynomial for tetrahedron that already we had discussed in the previous before one or two class where we had discussed how to write down displacement function or polynomial function for the element we had discussed what is a displacement function of tetrahedron to write down the displacement function of tetrahedron we have to use the three dimensional pascal triangle which is x y and z here second row right this is first element is constant and in second it will be a linear right similarly next will be x square x y y square already we had discussed that both the pascal triangles you refer those pascal triangle now there are four degrees of freedom u1 to u4 in x direction so we have to select four elements from the three dimensional pascal triangle so first element will be constant 1 and remaining three will be x y z from the second row of linear category all these elements will be multiplied by generalized coordinates we know that alpha 1 to alpha 4 okay and then we have to add all these four elements together we will get the displacement function so it is alpha 1 into 1 plus alpha 2x plus alpha 3y plus alpha 4z that is a displacement function for u similarly there are four degrees of freedom in y direction and four degrees of freedom in z direction so we have to use the same elements from the pascal triangle only generalized coordinates multiplied to those elements will be different for u we have used alpha 1 to alpha 4 so for v it will be alpha 5 to alpha 8 and for w it will be alpha 9 to alpha 12 and those four elements are same 1 x 
y and z which are from the pascal triangle so this is called as displacement function of tetrahedron similarly you can discuss the second type of element which is called as hexahedron or brick element okay so here there are four nodes now eight nodes so total there will be 24 degrees of freedom 8 into 3 so 8 dof in x direction u1 to u8 8 degrees of freedom in y direction v1 to v8 and w1 to w8 right so 8 degrees of freedom in x 8 degrees of freedom in y 8 degrees of freedom in z direction right so if you want to write down displacement function of this brick element I will just explain the displacement function of u only. Similarly, you can write down the v and w. Right? So, u is equal to 8 elements we have to select from the Pascal triangle, 3 dimensional Pascal triangle. So, those 8 elements will be like this. Right? So, first term is constant. Then, from second, there will be linear x, y, z. And third, there will be quadratic 6 terms. Right? 4 terms we have to select. So, this will be 8 elements from the 3 dimensional Pascal triangle, right. This also we had discussed in the displacement function video, there you can refer Pascal triangle how to write down displacement function for hexahedron. So, this is about the 3 dimensional elements. This is brief introduction to 3 dimensional elements. If a question is asked, introduce or write down short note on three dimensional elements right you can write down this much information for that i'll repeat again just go through the information one by one so three dimensional elements can be considered in the problem where field variables are depend on x y z directions for example this solid three dimensional solid can deliver beam Three-dimensional elements can be used for the discretization of trusses, beam, plate, shields and there are many other solid problems. Typically 3D solid elements are tetrahedron and hexahedron, right? Those, these two elements can be of flat surfaces or curved surfaces. Applications of these 3D elements are three-dimensional analysis or analysis of axisymmetric solids. In the classification of 3D elements, there are two basic families of three-dimensional elements similar to two-dimensional. First family is extension of triangular elements which is called as tetrahedron. Second family is the extension of rectangular element which is called as parallelopipeds. For example, tetrahedron with the four nodes and ten nodes, hexahedron or parallelopiped with the eight nodes and twenty nodes. In detail, we can explain one tetrahedron. 4 nodes, 3 degrees of freedom per node, total DOF will be 12 and then if you want to write down, you can write down displacement function, similarly hexahedron, ok. I hope all of you understand what is 3 dimensional elements, types of 3 dimensional elements and a brief note on the 3 dimensional element, ok. Thank you, thank you very much.